Okay, now we are on to some labs in week two materials. Okay, so we went through some of these things. Now I'm going to show, work on a couple of labs and show you how to do some things. Let's take this caffeine levels lab. Um, so if you look at this, let's read our problem statement. It says a half-life is the amount of time it takes for a substance or entity to fall to half its original value. So caffeine has the half-life of about six hours. So every six hours, the value goes down by half, right? So given caffeine amount in milligrams as input, output the caffeine level after six, so after six, hour, six hours, it's gone by half. After 12 hours, that means two sixes. So you divide by four. And after 24 hours, that means four sixes, right? So you divide by the appropriate number, which could be 16 depending on how you do it. So output each floating point value with two digits after the decimal point. So after six hours, you just take the input and divide by two, right? So you've already divided by one, two. If you want to do after 12 hours, you just take the original value, that is two sixes. So you divide by four, right? Two times two. So for one six, you divide by two for the next six, you have to tag on another two, you divide by another two, so 100 divided by uh, two times two is four, Then the next time you have four of those, so you divide by 16, okay, because you do two times two times two times two, two times four times um, two to the power of four, not two times four, okay. Okay, so let's start. You already have your input here. It says type in your code here. Um, so let's just type in the code there. We can say C out. We don't we can do our calculation and I'll put it all in the same statement, right? It wants you to type in I'm, I can copy some of these things and paste it, right? So after six hours, I'm gonna copy that. So I don't have any mistakes. So I put there after six hours. Notice there's a space after that colon. And so here is my answer. Uh, again, I like to copy these things so I don't make a mistake. So I copy the variable name, and we said divide by um, 2. And the answer has to have a space and mg after that. And it's okay if we make mistakes. We can always go back and fix some of those things. We'll try our best to do the right things. So again, I'm going to copy that so I don't have to retype all these things. Control V, go to the next line, control V. Now we have to change some of these things after 12 hours and after 24 hours. Okay, now this divided by, so we already have one, two. If you do that, right, multiply by two, then you get it after 12 hours. Divide by six one time, I mean, divide by two one time for one six, divide by two and again. So that would be four. Sorry, four. Now this would be. You divide by 2 for 6, then you divide by another 2 for uh, 12 hours, then another 6 will be 18 hours, and I'm sorry, another 2. Another 2 would be 18 hours, another 2 would be 24. So that would be 16. So instead of saying 2 times 2 times 2 times, we can simply say 16. Okay, and I have an end line after that. I think that should do it. Let's Leave it in develop mode. If your program requires input, let's type in our input. It does require input. So let's say run and see what we get. So it should go through that and it should, okay. So it tells us, well, that looks pretty close to our answer up there. Now let's, is there a space? Yep. So now let's go to submit mode and then you submit it and see how that works. And it says, oh, there is a problem. It says expected output. Aha. Uh -huh. So we need to make sure we have the 0, 0.00. So that comes in formatting. So let's format our output. And I'm sure it said somewhere up there that I should do this. And I kind of ignored that. So it's not a good thing. So you go back and you fix that. And don't worry about submitting it multiple times, you do it for as many times until you get the right answer. So these are all practice uh, exercises anyway. And the more you do, the better you get at it. So it's great to make those mistakes. And now it says, oh, we passed everything. All right, so fantastic. Now let's go and do one more lab. 
and uh, then we can be done with this. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Take musical note frequencies. Okay, so they're all about expressions and calculations. That's what we do in this in this um, week's material. So this says on a piano, a key has a frequency, say F0, right? There's a number. Uh, if you if you look at the musical key, right? Each each key has a frequency. Um, if each higher key, black or white, has a frequency, and this is a formula, so if one key has a frequency of 440, for example, what is the frequency of the key right next to it? That's what we are asking. And this is the formula. So this frequency, you multiply it by r to the power of n, where n is the distance. So if the key is right next to it, then the distance is 1. If we are looking at the key that is 2 away, then the distance is 2, right? And R is a formula. It's a, it's a constant number. So 2 to the power of 1 over 12. So what we want to do, or what they want us to do, is given an initial key frequency. Let's say this is the first frequency. They want us to find the next four higher key frequencies. So if it starts at 440, then these are the next four higher frequencies based on this formula. Okay, so one thing that I notice in this, it says there's a note. It says use one statement to compute R using the power function. Use the CMAT library. Then use that R in subsequent statements that use the formula where N would be 1, 2, 3, and 4. Because 1 is the key right next to it, 2 is the key after that, 3, and this is the fourth key, right? Okay, so let's start by, here's a good way to do this is R is a constant. Okay, and I like to put constants outside of main, even though the, this book doesn't ask you to do that. So let's say const double, and let's say r, and ideally all our constants should be uppercase. I'm not sure if uh, this cares. I have not tried this lab, so we'll try this. Power of 2, comma, 1, Point zero. I'm going to do 1.0 over 12.0 because I want that decimal. Okay, and then I'm going to include CMAT because it told us to do that. So let's include CMAT to do that power function. So power 2 to the power of 1 over 12. And that's my R that gets calculated. Now I'm going to, we need an input from the user. So let's uh, say double frequency. You know, call it frequency equals, let's initialize our variable to zero, and read from the user. There's no prompt, so we don't need that. We don't need to say output something. Just read C in frequency, okay? Then you are going to say C out. We'll do the calculation and output it all at the same time. So the first thing that gets output is the frequency, the actual, the original frequency that the user enters, followed by a space. And you can do this. You can go to the next line, and you can kind of uh, align. OK, the next thing that we want to output after the space is frequency times, again, we can use the power function, r, because r to the power of n, right? That is r to the power of, and that's a formula, f0 times r to the power of n. So this is. This would be 2 to the power of 1 over 12. This is r to the power of n. And this should be capital R, because that's what I said. And a space after that. And again, we do that. Frequency times power of r comma 2. Next. OK, space frequency times power of r comma 3. And one more. Uh, output a space and frequency. I'm going to make some mistakes here so we can see what it does when we make some mistakes. R comma 4. And let's say I type an end line without my extraction operator. So it's got a few mistakes, right? OK, so that's it. That's all I want to type in. Now let's develop mode. We Let's say we want to give it an input. Let's type in 440. That's, that's our input up here. And let's run it. Let's run program and see what it does. OK, it says we have a few problems. It says, oh, wait, true was not declared on line uh, 16. So 16, oh, yeah, it's not supposed to be true. It's supposed to be frequency, the Q. 
So when you're trying to fix errors, fix only one thing at a time. It makes it much easier than trying to find all the errors and fix it, right? Okay, so now let's try to run the program again and fix that. Okay, now it says, oh, here's the other problem on line 17. It says something about expected semicolon before and line. So it says either you put a semicolon there, but I don't, that's not what I wanted to do. What I really wanted to do was put an extraction operator. That's what that's called. So I can um, use an end line after that. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so there, that looks better, but that's not what we wanted. We wanted to make sure we have, our output has only two decimal places. Ours says more than that. So let's try here. Let's go and do our fixed show point and set precision to two. And we have IO man up there. So that's going to be good. Let's try one more time. Set precision has been done. Okay, that's similar to that answer. That looks pretty close. Okay, that actually looks exactly like that. So I'm going to go to submit mode and I'm going to try and submit it. Let's see what we get. Because that's where it actually runs their tests to see if all our answers are right. And look, it says it passed all the tests. So that's good. So make sure you don't worry about the mistakes. If you make mistakes, then just go back and fix it and try to do it again. Okay. All right. I'll see you in the next next video.